You're listening to The Retail Perch with Shaker Raman and Gary Hawkins. We're going to discuss industry challenges and opportunities in grocery retail, AI, current and upcoming trends, and so much more. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Retail Perch. We're going to be talking about digital engagement, both inside and outside the store. Look at some of the things that have been happening with the current COVID crisis, how it's accelerated, impacted digital engagement for retailers. And as usual, if you've got topics that you want us to discuss, DM us at The Retail Perch on Instagram and send us an email at theretailperchatbirds.com. I also wanted to let listeners know that if you ever get to be a guest on our show, you get a free mug that we'll mail out to you. I thought that's an important piece to tell you. But, uh, and that may be the only reason you want to get on the show, but if it is, great. <laughs> it's going to be a collector's <laughs> item. Exactly. So, Gary, digital engagement, I know this is a topic that's very close to your heart. You've been talking about this for a while, but in light of everything that's happened in the last few months with the COVID crisis, this has really come to the fore, hasn't it? It certainly has. You know, before the beginning of this year and and when the COVID crisis hit, digital engagement was on, I think, nearly every retailer's roadmap. But I saw retailer after retailer really taking a laid back approach to it, thinking that, well, when the shoppers want to engage digitally, we'll be there. We're not going to really go push this or push this on them. Then the whole coronavirus crisis hit, right? And Almost overnight, we saw two things happen that really impacted. The first was brand manufacturers pulling back any and all promotions they could, because why promote a product that probably is not going to be on the shelf? So there goes all the content for the weekly ad and so on. And shoppers not wanting to touch anything they didn't have to touch, right, for fear of the virus, including those printed weekly paper ads. So all of a sudden, digital became really important. And I think another sort of interesting piece of that is retailers saw a need to have real-time digital communication with a large portion of their shoppers through this crisis so they could communicate because store hours were changing in real time, regulations were changing in real time, being able to give shoppers an idea of how long the line was out front to get in the store. All these things, I think, really came together to finally put digital top of mind for retailers. In fact, Gary, you're absolutely right, because I've heard, I think, early in this crisis that a lot of retailers we spoke to said traffic to their website just shot up through the roof because there were a lot of people going to their website to get information because they couldn't go to the store to do that. And I think a lot of retailers' websites and digital tools weren't set up to provide dynamic, up-to-date information to shoppers. Yeah, no, that's right. right. And I think we saw retailers leveraging, I guess we could say the three primary channels, you know, their websites, mobile apps, and then social media, right, to try to keep that flow of information going. But what I I see happening is a growing number of retailers, and again, of all sizes, are quickly coming to the realization that growing digital engagement, and they now know it's important, implies the need to be relevant the need to be personal with communications, be it promotions, be it information, recipe, anything and everything that can be tailored to that shopper, there's a need for that. In general, also we've seen an uptick in app usage, people going to the app for more information, more up-to-date information. What other tools do you think that the retailer has at their disposal? I know social media is a big thing, but I've seen some retailers be very successful in having a large social media following, and some simply haven't given it much importance. But right. I don't know what the stats are, but I have a strange feeling that if you look at people, retailers who are, probably had a strong digital engagement presence, probably saw a bigger uptick in their sales and engagement and lost fewer shoppers in this time than others who did not. I would agree with that. Social media takes work. It takes dedicating staff. It takes investing in the right platforms to be able to not only create content, manage content, get it distributed across a growing number of channels, right? From Instagram to Facebook to you name it. And a lot of retailers have maybe invested a little bit, but not heavily. Whereas others really understand that space, have invested heavily, and have the resources applied against it. And I think they're the ones experiencing success. I know we covered this, I think, maybe on our second or third episode where we talked about some challenges 
but I want to keep this conversation on the positive end. I feel that we can't avoid this, which is that for a retailer to really have a strong digital engagement strategy, they need to have some common pool of information from which to draw the necessary intelligence to communicate with shoppers effectively, right? And, And that seems to be like the repeated failing I see with a lot of retailers. As you know, there's a number of pieces related to that, right? There's not only having that content pool, be it offers, promotions, recipes, whatever it is, having a sizable enough offer pool or a content pool that's refreshed regularly. But the other side of that is also having enough attribute data because attributes drive everything, right? Not a lot of retail executives really understand this. It's attributes that drive knowledge and understanding of that customer, that customer intelligence, but it's also attributes, be it attributes around the product, sugar-free, nut-free, gluten-free, or attributes around content that allow those things to be brought together in a meaningful way to deliver that relevant, personalized experience to the shopper. Even more basic than that, Gary, I just see that a lot of retailers just don't have good enough email data to even communicate with their shoppers via email or the app. So the level of digital engagement, in some cases, not as high as you would think it is. And I guess maybe as important as it is to get a loyalty card, your email is kind of like your digital loyalty card. That's right. And I think retailers, when they hear that word loyalty, some retailers will get it. Others are going to run the other direction, right? Because there's still some number of retailers that fight against that. I think what's important today is, in my mind, the retailer really does need to know who their customers are. They need to have customer identified purchase data. Now, how you get that is a whole nother question, right? Many retailers have relied on loyalty programs they have had in place for years to generate that data. But in today's digital world, there's other ways to go at it, right? And we've both seen retailers approach this differently, using their cell phone number as an ID and so on. But at the end of the day, you've got to have that data and that intelligence. And some way of reaching that customer outside of your store, right? So whether it's you have a really strong email program or an SMS program or a social media program, the point is you need to have some way of connecting at an individual level. Yep. with a shopper to communicate. I know during the COVID times, we certainly helped some retailers get the message out to their shoppers about changing in hours and changing in policies and so on and so forth, which I think was critical at that time. And I just shudder to think what retailers who didn't have that capability had to do. And you know, it's funny, I saw this at my bank the other day. I went into the bank to do a transaction because they, I finally found out that they were opening up. And it's only when I got to the bank on the front door where there was a big notice posted saying you can only walk in by appointment. I mean, now what good is it for me (laughs) if I have to go all the way to the bank to find out I can walk in by appointment? So uh, that's a classic failing I see of poor digital engagement, which is uh, the bank has a mobile app. They could very easily have sent a push notification or a message to all people who use the mobile app saying that this is changed in policy. And to me, that's something to learn from. I mean, I know a lot of retailers who are listening to this probably have a mobile app, probably got a mobile app simply because they had to get one. They had to stay in the game. But maybe they didn't think through exactly how they could use it to leverage connectivity with their shoppers. Yeah, I don't think anyone could have foreseen the need for that kind of digital platform and communication used that way that we've seen a need for through this crisis. Now that we've seen it and now that retailers have seen that, that need and many see it as an opportunity, they're full tilt towards getting uh, capabilities in place. People have in the past relied on SMS type communications, Gary, Mm -hmm. but I I see that if you use push notifications intelligently, especially if they're relevant and useful to the shopper, they're just a great way of keeping in touch with your shoppers. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked about, you know, digital engagement, largely reaching shoppers outside the store. What about inside? You know, once you get inside the store, how do you see digital impacting that? I think there's, there's a number of places. And I think smart retailers are going to understand the opportunity to leverage primarily their app to providing different services, privileges, help to that shopper inside the store, right? Whether it's navigation to help them find the product, by something akin to a Google Maps, being able to provide detailed product nutrition information, 
attributes and so on to the shoppers are standing in the aisle trying to decide what to purchase. Maybe it's guiding the shopper to specific products that are most relevant to them. And maybe it's even providing location triggered promotions as a shopper moves through the store, recipes in a timely fashion. There's a multitude of things. You see digital as being pervasive, both outside and just as valuable inside the store. Y- y- right? Yes. Through the crisis, I think we've seen shopper use of mobile, you know, these things inside the store go up a lot over the last several months. The industry has always talked about the opportunity available to leverage this device that every shopper has. And while theoretically it makes sense, you still didn't necessarily see a lot of shoppers using it, whether it was battery issues or they've got their hands full with kids and didn't have a free hand to use their phone. I've noticed over the last several months as I'm out in store shopping, what I do believe is an increased use. I think It goes along with the thought here that a lot of people are still leery about touching things, surfaces that they don't maybe need to touch, right? Mm. There's implications there around other in-store digital channels, kiosks, digital signage, that type thing. All those can provide value, but some of those interfaces may have to be rethought in a time of contactless shopping. Right, right. I think when we talk about digital engagement, most people think about only shopper-facing tools. But I'm sure there's value for customer associates, the store manager, to have access to some digital tools which helps them better service their customers in the store. Would you think? Yes, but there's also another dimension to that. There's the need for digital tools and capabilities for associates in the store to provide timely, meaningful information to help shoppers. Right. But just like we talked about the retailer needing to communicate ideally in real time with shoppers around changing store hours and so on, think about the needs internally, operationally, the retailer needing to inform all their associates of changing hours, changing schedules. Someone in the deli got sick, so they've now had to stop five other workers that they came in contact with or quarantining, you know, massive impacts to schedules and all this happening in real time. Cleaning schedules, sanitation processes and practices. Retailers needed a way to convey all this information, again, digitally in real time, not relying on the bulletin board in the back room and a piece of paper stuck up on it. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, nowadays you have platforms like Slack and Teams and other platforms that of course, can get teams together and get these communications out. I don't know how pervasive they are in the retail world because you do have a lot of floating staff uh, that comes in and goes out. Now, I've always thought that when you come into a store, I think we talked about it in the last episode where we talked about AR and digital and how it can enhance the shopping experience. Are there efficiencies that you think it can help with, in in other words, apart from just the shopping experience? So inside the store? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of the areas is potentially, and again, if you've got enough shoppers engaged digitally, right, using this to understand how many shoppers are coming in the front door on a constant basis all day long, understanding how long on average that device and the person are in the store and projecting how many checkouts you're gonna need open in the next 15 minutes or 20 minutes, right? Kroger has done something along those yes. lines, but not, not off the phone though. Right? No, that's right. Kroger has used an IR solution at the front end and they've used it incredibly effectively okay. across all their stores. But now there's potential for other retailers to leverage different digital technology to do much the same thing. Well, you know, the other place that I've seen it used is Essentially, your phone becomes your de facto loyalty card, yes. uh, where you know retailers don't really have to buy cards and give out cards because I'm sure there's a cost associated with it. And I know for certain there are a number of retailers where shoppers routinely lose their cards, have to get replacements, and it's a cost to the retailer. Yes. And plus, it also becomes a challenge in, t- in maintaining the continuity of data on that shopper. And, and I see mobile as being a replacement for your loyalty card. I know people use their phone number. But you know what? I've changed my phone number a couple of times in the last few years. I get a better deal on a different carrier. You switch sometimes. And I think you mentioned this. There's also a lot of digital engagement that can be activated through your phone. I know we met companies where you can create your list and kind of transfer it over to your POS through a 
barcode scan and checking out through the phone. And I think we're going to just see growing uses for what can be done with that device, right? Because again, it's a piece of hardware that the retailer doesn't have to provide. Shoppers already got it. So we're going to see continued use there. Shaker, let's take a minute and pivot again, though, and go back outside the store for a minute. We talked a lot about the use of apps and social media and so on, but we're seeing a lot of retailers, and really it's the big retailers that are focused on this, are leveraging their customer data, their knowledge of in-store purchases, and creating ad networks. We're seeing Amazon do this. We're seeing Kroger do it. Walmart, uh, CBS just made an announcement. And I think Bird's Eye is doing a little bit of work in this area or looking at some things. If you could, maybe help listeners understand what, what's going on here. Listen, I think the fact of the matter is that a retailer's website is only going to attract so much traffic. Right? And I think if the retailer truly wants to reach potential shoppers and current shoppers outside of their properties, they need a way to plug into some kind of network that can reach them. And I think what we're talking about, is it possible to leverage shopper data and traffic data that you get from third party resources to connect with shoppers. So John's on ESPN.com and he lives in a zip code where you have a store. When he goes on ESPN.com, is it possible to do something that can get John into your store? Well, if he's an existing shopper, is there something that'll help personalize that ad to John and get him back into the store? So I think there's just lots of possibilities. I think we're looking at some exciting integrations where we can make this capability come alive. Uh, not just for retailers, but maybe, you know, I think obviously retailers are focused in a big way on private labels as well, right? So I, there's many exciting possibilities from an acquisition standpoint to retention to growth yep. that you can use a wider ad network. And I think, listen, if the retailers don't get smart about this quickly, then they're going to lose out to the other retailers who are able to. If I remember right, back in the early 2000s when Kroger launched their current loyalty program, what they were really good at was, let's say, stealth marketing of some sort. Yeah. We're yes. able to directly connect with shoppers without having to advertise things in a weekly ad and get them. To me, digital engagement in a larger network sense is almost very similar to that. If you're not in the game of reaching out to these shoppers and getting in their mind space, then you're going to lose out to retailers who have figured it out. Do you think this is something, this is a capability that is becoming available to mid-market and potentially even smaller retailers? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I mean, we see exciting possibilities with once you have a mature personalization engine that can then integrate with some of these ad network technologies, I think working on things that would essentially make it very affordable, if not super cheap for somebody was a mid-size, even an unsophisticated retailer, as long as they have decent data to be able to expand their presence in a, a marketplace. I think that's a good point. This kind of capability is quickly moving from a nice to have to a have to have. If you want to remain relevant to your shoppers and you want to compete because competition has already shifted from, you know, decades of mass promotion, the weekly ad to much more targeted, personalized approach. It's becoming more strategic, leveraging customer intelligence, and that's coming together with big data, right? We've both seen some really fascinating data that's available out in the marketplace that can help a retailer understand not only who their shoppers are, but where else their shoppers may go to shop and many other things. Fairly well known, right? So I think an average shopper probably shops in three to four stores. So there's a constant tussle for how much of the share of wallet your yes. store is going to get. And I think in this day and age, especially with the millennials, Gary, I think, you know, the growing population right now, they're more experiential, right? And a lot of the experiences are framed by their digital engagement. If you're not a strong brand digitally and connected and have presence across multiple platforms, then you're going to lose out to brands that do. Absolutely. So retailers across the board have to up their game and do it pretty quickly here. I think this is an exciting topic, but clearly there's lots of opportunities for entrepreneurs to come up with ideas, for retailers to kind of think, think of this time as to critically examine some of their processes, kind of data they have. But there's, there's one key thing that I want to, I think we missed talking about that I want to really connect on, which is paper weekly ad. And we talked about in the past how this is such a critical piece of a retailer's go-to-market strategy. And you talked about how people don't want to 
pick up the paper now in the store and yeah. look through it. What do you think retailers have to rethink about the whole weekly ad process? It's really interesting. And if you understand the industry and the way the industry works, it's easier to understand how that ad came to be so important, right? What historically has driven the importance of that weekly ad is not so much the retailer wanting to draw customers as it has been wanting to access marketing funds from the manufacturers, the brand manufacturers, right? Because any you know, significant size retailer is being paid to put those products on the front page or inside pages of those ads. It's putting products on some kind of deal that is providing the content for those weekly ads. And that's what's driven a lot of retailer behavior, right? I, and I've said for many years, ask any retailer what the most important part of their business is, and inevitably they're gonna say, oh, the customer. And yet if you look at where they spend resources internally, it's not on the customer. It's on merchandising, buyers, uh, clubbing every vendor coming through the door over the head to get more money out of them, more marketing funds and so on. That's where the real focus has been. But that's changing now. I think Kroger helped lead the charge, if you will, to developing a customer focus. And I think a growing number of retailers are finally beginning to realize that revenue, profit, and so on comes from the customer, not from that box of cereal sitting on the shelf. And they're understanding that a focus on the customer and a focus on growing share of wallet and growing lifetime value can be far more profitable than worrying about marketing funds. Right. And, you know, for a lot of retailers, that is their single biggest expense from their advertising and marketing department. Yeah, right. absolutely. So if you had to give somebody a, a tip on how do you change that? How do you change that approach? What would you suggest? It's a great question. There's not a simple answer to it because it really depends on how big the retailer is and what kind of direct access they have to the vendors and brand manufacturers. But I do think there's a progression there. I think the first step is simply taking the content in that weekly ad and other content, you know, maybe TPRs around the store and so on, providing that in a pool to personalize to shoppers, right? So at least you're helping surface the most relevant promotions to each shopper each week, save them searching through all the pages of the ad. The next step I would go is looking at developing what I think of as hybrid pricing. And it's extending a deeper price to certain shoppers that that product is really relevant to or is really a motivator to, to help get them in the store. And maybe that means that Mary is going to see a 25 cent richer price on that product. Frank may see something that's I'm less than that, right? So we're talking about personalized promotional pricing. And then the more access the retailer has working with the vendors and brands directly is just continuing to grow that, right? And continuing the shift from a product first, let's go find customers to buy this, to a true customer first, let's determine what products are relevant at what prices to maximize the number of shoppers coming in the store each week, share of wallet, lifetime value, and so on. And, you know, I think coming back full circle, a retailer could all do all of this, but if you have no way of communicating back to your shoppers effectively, then all this planning goes to waste. I think what we're finally arriving at is it's really important to know how to connect with your shoppers inside and outside your store. And with outside your store, there's so many options available, but it starts with a focus on understanding that this is important to do. And, you know, you could start with just email, move on to social media, yeah. then build an app. There's just many ways of going about it, but there's no way out of it. You have to be digitally engaged because if you're not, your competition is, and you're going to lose the customer to your competition. Absolutely. And I think just to reinforce what you're saying, the retailers really need to develop a strategy or a plan for how they're going to do this, where they're going to start and proactively go after it. Uh, we're having a great time chatting with you guys. I think next episode, we're probably going to have a guest, a couple of interesting guests that we've got lined up. Uh, some yep. people from uh, academia, some people from the survey world, some retailers. So we look forward to the next few episodes. And again, thanks so much for listening. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Until next time. Make sure to join us every Monday and connect with us at The Retail Perch on Instagram and Facebook. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at theretailperch at birdseye.com. 
Until next time, this is Shaker. And this is Gary, signing off.